Hey, what's up guys? My name is Moda and welcome back to the Mining Stacker YouTube channel. So today's video going to be talking about the ASIC market. Going to give an overall update on things because it's only been a week, but a lot has changed. Going to go over profitability numbers, going to go over restocks, going to go over prices, right? It's been only, again, it's only been a week, but a lot has changed and I'm trying to catch up on everything and it's a lot of changes. A lot of good changes, though, if you're in the market for them, right? So we'll talk about those trends and what's going on there. So if that sounds good, guys, stay tuned, all right? So let's get to it. Let's start off with the overall market because this is what's causing these profitability numbers to change, right? So BTC overall, if you look at the seven-day chart, <laughs> we have this nice drop here, right? And it's been holding, okay? And ultimately... Past few days, it's been going down. Okay, so we're holding, holding super tight at this $22,000 range. It looks like it may continue more downwards, right? So not here to speculate on price, but it's something we keep our eye on because, again, what happens with BTC affects the entire market. Okay, even BTC only going down a couple percent, it affects all coins drastically, right? Especially a lot of these guys who have been pumping hard, they're usually going to get hit the hardest. Right, as we've seen with some of them already, with CKB especially. We'll talk about that here in a second. So, what did change a good amount is the profitability. Right, the K7 for quite a while had been whoa, what's going on here? Something's up with the API. The D9 is down to eight bucks a day. No, no, no. Let's refresh this thing. There it goes. All right, it's back up to 14. All right, I don't know what's been going on with the API there, but first time I had an issue there. But um, the K7 had been holding up in that $20, $25 range fairly consistently, even with the hash rate going up. That was kind of the impressive part, that even though the hash rate was going up, yield was going down, but the profitability was staying fairly decent only because it's had such good price appreciation. Right, so the fiat value was remaining up just because the Nervos had been doing so well. They had that pump all the way to 0 0.0065 just about, right? And they were holding it fairly well. So even though the hash rate was going up, the profitability was remaining about at those same levels just because of that. But again, this is why I harp on you guys to focus on the yield. Don't pay attention to the profitability as far as the fiat value. Look at the yield, pay attention to the yield. Okay, because that is what you should be using for your information. Like if you want to make future projections, focus on that yield. Because again, guys, during this bear market, we're going to have pumps, we're going to have dumps, we're going to have times where we're super sideways, but you got to focus on that yield. Okay, and like I've mentioned, my game plan with the K7, the K3 is 2025, right? It's to hold for the long term. As long as they stay profitable, I'm good with it because I'm confident that come that bull market, we're going to be living good, right? But for now, though, it does have to at least be profitable. If it's not profitable, it's not going to be plugged in, right? So, so far, like right now, for example, my KD Lite, no longer profitable. Even on that low hash rate mode, it's like slightly negative. So it'll stay plugged in for a little bit longer, but if this downtrend continues, that guy's going to get unplugged and it's going to get shelved, right? Probably throw it on the shelf behind me here, if anything. Um, but yeah, so, so far, K7's been going, everything's been going down just because of those numbers, but again, focus on that yield, okay? So like the K7, it looks like it's been getting hit hard because it was at 25, now it's at 14, but realistically, it's probably going to go down even more. Right, if we look at the price, realistically, it's probably going to go down into this range, or it's the 0 0.003 range, which is slightly lower than this. So don't be too shocked to see this go down to like seven, eight bucks, maybe even lower. Right, especially because the hash rate is going to continue to go up, just like the KA3. The KA3 has looked like it got hit the hardest, right? But it's because it hasn't had that same kind of price appreciation, so it's just been gradually going down which is what we're expecting, right? We knew our yield was going to go down. We did our projections. The difference here, though, is that it did not have the same price appreciation. Nervos in the December lows was at 0 0.0022. That's why when we did those calculations, it was based off of that price, right? Luckily, we did have this uptrend, so it did go up. So the profitability number stayed good, right? Versus the Kadena didn't. 
Okay, we're at 0 0.088, and right now it's currently at freaking under a dollar. Okay, so even at the high though, with the most that it pumped went up to a dollar thirty-five. Okay, so about fifty percent. So it did pump up a little bit, but overall, definitely nowhere near like what Nervos did. Right, so that's why on paper it looks like it's been hit the hardest, but according to what we we're guessing our yield would be, we're pretty much on point. And if anything, it's kind of better than what we we're predicting. Okay, but I'm not gonna go into the hash rate too much because again, another big shipment of these guys has came out. Okay, my shipment was last week, and a lot of the other vendors, you can see even BT minus put out another tweet, they got yet another shipment in. Okay, meaning that it's not just them. Pretty sure it's going to be all the other vendors. So for those of you who have pre-ordered and haven't gotten yours, wherever you order from, keep your eyes peeled because you're probably going to get a shipping notice here fairly soon. Okay. So the K7 went down, K3 went down, the D9 has gone down. Again, it's because of the price appreciation. So far, it doesn't seem like they've shipped yet, but they're going to be shipping here fairly soon if they haven't already. Um, we'll talk about the price here in a bit. We do have some updates on that. Um, if we look at the dash chart, has gone down just like everything else. So that's what's causing the profitability to go down. Um, and expect it to continue to go down, especially once these other miners come online. Right? It is going to affect the hash rate as expected. And it is just going to continue to go down. Okay? So I know it sucks to see these prices. And everyone's like, oh man, it's going down. But again, focus on your yield. And if you want cheap hardware, this is what you want to see. Okay? And also, another benefit of this, for those of you guys who have the newer hardware, for example, the K7, kind of sucks to say, right? Feel bad for all you guys who have the older hardware, but for us with the newer hardware, it does benefit you because it's now making these other machines unprofitable, okay? So when we're up here at 0 .006, even the older machines were profitable. The CK5 was profitable, the CK6 was profitable, even the little CK box two was profitable. Okay. But now at these prices, they are no longer profitable. So if this price sustains, doesn't even have to really go down more. But if this price sustains, they're going to be unplugging. Okay. And if it goes down more, right, even those guys with cheap power will be unplugging. Okay. Meaning less hash rate on the network, meaning more yield. So even though your profitability is going to go down, again, focus on your yield. Okay, so if those guys unplug, again, we're going to get more yield because there's less hash on the network. Okay, prior to the K7s coming online, there was 60 petahash on the network. Okay, meaning it was 60 petahash of the older machines. Okay, so which is a good chunk because we're like in the 150s right now last time I looked. Okay, so... I know it sucks for you guys with the older equipment, but for those of you guys with the newer stuff, it does benefit you in that sense, okay? And then also, again, this downtrend I'm looking forward to because, again, cheaper equipment, especially if this downtrend sustains, okay? Again, at the end of the day, this year, we want cheap equipment. We want cheap prices to DCA into, okay? We're still in the bear market. I know everybody got hyped with this crazy pump. Oh, BTC is going to 47K. And it could still happen, right? I'm not saying it's not going to happen, but for me personally, I want these dips. I want these lower prices. I want it like I haven't bought since December. Pretty much been having that itch. And now that I'm seeing this downtrend, it's like, ooh, okay. What are we looking at? Which to me, everything is still kind of high. But again, I purchased big, so I'm waiting for lower prices. Okay, so just keep in mind. I know it sucks to see these profitability numbers, but again, long term. Long term is the game plan here. Okay, um, one that's been holding up surprisingly well is this freaking handshake, right? That low, well, they had this crazy dip. I don't know what's up with that. But the overall low was at 0 0.025 to 0 0.036, which is kind of funny because it's probably the least hyped out of all of them. And the smallest market cap, right? This thing is number 618. Could also be that it hasn't gone down as much just because they're having that convention right now. That's the reason like Bitmain and Gold Shell have been like hyping up HNS so much right now. It's because of that little conference that's going on. So chances are after this conference is over, it may go down a bit. So just keep that in mind. Also, another thing to factor in, we'll talk about it here in a second. But um, so again, K3 shipment coming in. So expect that to go 
the hash rate to continue to go up. So Bitmain is restocking the HS3. And again, another increase. So this one, it's going up to $2,500. Okay, they had this little guessing game. Happened to see it on my flight yesterday. I didn't read the rules though, right? In the rules, it said it had to be like an integer of 10. I didn't read it until after, right? So like a dummy, I put $24.99 as my guess. It'll be in $2,500 bucks if I would have read the rules. May have changed it, but I uh, missed that there. But it is restocking. If you are interested, I guess I think a lot of people are confused by this deposit thing, but it looks like you're able to do a deposit and you can do it that way. It looks like you're able to purchase it right now. Last time I looked real quick, you were still able to do it. Not too sure exactly how it's going to work or there are any like they're saying it's going to ship this month, supposedly. I don't know if they capped it. I don't know what's going on there. But for those of you who are interested, you can look into it if you'd like. But keep in mind, Handshake is having a having next month. OK, so it is going to affect your rewards drastically. So if you are thinking of getting one, factor that in. Don't pay these like inflated prices. OK, so just keep that in mind. Um, for me, I'm not interested in this because that's about the price I paid for it. Especially after 30% tax, it's going to be the price I paid for one already. So for me, this doesn't benefit me at all. But for those of you who are interested, again, risky, risky play with HS3 because of that having, And the fact that HNS isn't the biggest pumper in the world. But definitely a DGEN play. Again, my play with it was the fact that it's going to be the only profitable miner for this network. Okay, we're already seeing that now. It's literally going to be the only thing profitable. That's the reason I jumped in. Realistically, it can do well, right? If HNS does well, or it can tank pretty drastically, right? Could be a really good investment, really bad investment. Definitely a DGEN play if you're interested. Okay, highly, highly risky, highly, highly volatile. Only because, again, HNS is not very, like, pump-friendly, okay? But a lot of potential upside because it's such a small market cap. It's, like, number 618. So it doesn't even have to necessarily pump like crazy for it to be extremely profitable, especially if they keep their word and don't, you know, obliterate the network, okay? Which, so far, they have. They didn't put that many out there. We'll see how many release in this batch, though, right? So, again, if you are thinking about getting one, factor those things in. Okay, super out of all the new miners coming out, definitely the riskiest, but it's also the one that can be the freaking most profitable out of all of them only because it's such a small market cap. Okay, the main reason I went in is because Bitman is invested, Gold Shell's invested. Okay, doesn't take a whole lot of capital to pump the hell out of the price and increase sales, right? This thing pumps up, expect it to go up, right? So... A lot of risk, a lot, a lot of risk. Um, let's see what else. So I had been chatting with a couple of you guys a few weeks ago. I was noticing that in a lot of the Telegram groups, they were listing the D9 at like 7,200. Okay, so like I've mentioned before, I would not buy through these Telegram groups, but if you're thinking about getting one, it's good insight as far as where the price trends are going. Okay, so I talked to a few guys a few weeks ago selling like hey expect the price drop coming because they're selling at like 7200 so now we're seeing these prices come to fruition so now even bt miners has their april batch at 76.99 okay which is kind of interesting because bitmain still has it advertised at 8500 it did sell out in the five seconds or whatever but might have only been 50 we don't know how many are on there again it's like bs advertising which is a fun way to advertise it but um Realistically, as we predicted, it's just too freaking expensive. Okay, so if we continue with this price action, right, especially it doesn't even necessarily have to go down a whole lot. If it just sustains at this price point, it's going to go down quite a bit. Why? Because this profitability number is going to go down. Okay, this number is not including all of these D9s that have yet to ship, all the guys who did purchase them. The hash rate is going to continue to go up, meaning your yield is going to go down meaning this is gonna go down. Especially if the overall market continues to go down. So if this guy continues down, goes back to over here, then expect it to go even cheaper, right? The price I would be eyeing it at is maybe in like the $5,000 range. 
Maybe if I was more bullish on Dash, I'd be more about it. But overall, to me, not too big on Dash, right? Even researching it, going through it, looking at the payment channels, what they're trying to do with it, is nothing really different from a lot of the others, okay? Maybe when partnerships come out or something bullish overall, but overall, looking at the charts, looking at the speculation, looking at the community... Not really something I'm with. The reason I went with the other ones is because it was already things that I was already into, already DCing into. So when that release came out, I went in with it. Okay, so that was my mindset from the beginning. Because whether I was going to mine it, I was going to DCA into it. Right, so mining is almost just like a forced DCA. Right, that's the easiest way to think about it. So that's the reason I went so hard into those. Again, maybe sub 5K, I would consider it more. But again, for me, it's too much. Right. Another interesting price is the E9 Pro. So it's currently at $34.99 and potentially even lower. Shout out to Coastal Crypto. They were trying to do a group buy for $2,500. So if you're interested in that, hit them up on Twitter. Follow them on YouTube. Very cool that they're able to do stuff like this. They're also doing one for like a, one of the iPolos. Very cool of them to do stuff like that. Okay, this is the type of stuff you want to see. Helping the community out, putting like group buys out there. Awesome, awesome stuff, right? Love seeing those kinds of things. Um, but overall, though, the E9 Pro has been going down, which is interesting because if you remember a few weeks back, they had that event. They had those auctions, right? They had two auctions for 1,000 units. The average price for one of the auctions was $4,000. The other one, 4200 So if anything, to me, it was more of a like a showboating thing. Right, whoever won the auctions, they were just kind of like showing off essentially because immediately after we we're seeing these prices already, okay, which is below that price. So, so to me, when I saw the prices, I was like, okay, so 4,000, so resale's probably gonna be 4,500, but no, okay, as we've seen, they are lower, they're at 3,500, and again, this group by possibility at 2,500. So, to me, fairly good price. Right, considering the profitability on it, looking at the E9 Pro, it's making about eight bucks a day on ETH Fair, ETH Fair and Zill. Right, so remember you do have those options: ETH Fair, ETH W, and then ETC. Right, and then all of them you can dual mine. You're doing those plus Zillica. Okay, so keep that in mind. So that price point looking pretty enticing. Right, and it's definitely one that I have my eye on. Um, overall, the KA3 it has gone down. It's down at $84.99 and expected to continue to go down, right? Especially if this price action continues. Especially right now, we're under a buck, right? So again, price doesn't even have to go down, but just continue sideways. The hash rate is going to continue to go up, meaning that the fiat value profitability is going to continue to go down, meaning less people are going to be looking at it, less people are going to be paying these crazy prices, so it's going to go down. Okay, so for those of you who are thinking of getting one, this is all saying wait for the hash rate to settle, wait for everything to settle. Especially if these prices continue to go down, it means cheaper hardware, guys. Okay, I know it sucks seeing like, oh man, it's going down. It was making 50 bucks a day. But again, we all knew, all you guys have been following, been watching, we all knew that was not going to happen. Okay, but the benefit with these prices going down is just cheaper hardware, which is what we want. This year is the time to accrue hardware, buy coins at low prices. We want these low prices. We want prices to go down, okay? Um, so the HS3, they have them restocked at $46.99. Just cheaper than what it was a few weeks ago, because I don't know if you guys had been following, but they were listing them at like $5,000, $6,000, these crazy prices, which is way too expensive. Even this $46.99, way too high, because again, that halving is coming next month. These guys are taking advantage of people not knowing about this halving because they look on, again, they go on ASIC minor value, but like, all right, it's making 11 bucks a day. Let's get it. No, guys, the halving is next month. Your yield is going to get cut in half. Okay, so please, please factor that in before you pay these inflated prices. Okay, even if you still are considering getting one, wait for that halving, wait for those prices to go down. Okay, if you're able to get in at 2000 2500 that's not the worst price. That's about what I paid in for it, and that's what it is. Can it go down more? Yes, right? Especially if this halving goes down and this price continues to go down. 
right? Something to keep in mind, something to think about, right? I took that risk knowing what I'm getting into. And again, like I mentioned, it is super, super risky. Out of all the new miners, this is 100% the riskiest. It can completely backfire, okay? But again, it also has the greatest potential upside if HNS goes up. It doesn't even have to go up like crazy. It's just because it's such a small market cap, number 618, it doesn't take a whole lot for it to pump a lot, right? So that's definitely a degen play. So please keep that in mind, guys. I know some of you guys have been asking about it, but it is high, high risk, okay? Um, even uh, BTC miners have been going down, surprisingly. And this was actually a few weeks ago. I noticed it was at this price already, okay? So this is not even factoring in this most recent. Oh, we're under 22 now. This most recent price drop, so it's been going down, okay? This is actually about the price it was back in December, okay? It was at like 48, went down to 46, and then 42.99. I believe it was 41.99, I think was at the lowest. And that, if we would have continued that downtrend or sideways action, I believe it would have gone even lower, right? But then January came and we've been like up only, okay? So the prices of these guys also went up. They were up to like 5,400, and then they went down to 5,000, 4,800. Now they're down to 4,299, okay? So overall, the price has been going down. Although, tidbit of news with these XPs, for those of you who follow Son of a Tech, if you caught that podcast he did with Bits Be Trippin', Bits mentioned that there have been a high failure rate with the XPs. So something to really keep in mind, especially out of everybody, his insight I would value the most only because he is in that game. So he talks to those guys. He does consulting. So something to really keep in mind, something to think about. Okay. We don't really hear a whole lot about what happens in that segment. Again, they are the ones with the most amount of XPs. So I would value his input more than anybody. So it's something to keep in mind if you didn't hear that podcast. I'd highly recommend you to go listen to it if you didn't. A lot of good stuff in there. But uh, something to keep in mind with that XP if you are thinking about getting one. Okay. There's been other news recently also about the XP that hasn't been looking too hot as far as the long-term game goes. So just something to factor in there. Um, another drop was actually the What's Miner has been available now. The M50 has been kind of hard to get, right? And they actually do have them now. Even the 120 terahash model, $26.99, which isn't that bad. Okay, you can go down to the 110 model, it's $23.99. I would probably jump for the 120 terahash model. So not as efficient as the Bitmain, but typically these have the reputation for being workhorses, right? This tends to be a preference for a lot of the farms, because they tend to do better in heat, right? So like for me, this would probably be the one, right? Especially at this price, because overall they're typically harder to get, right? They don't really sell on as many websites They tend to sell more in bulk. They don't really advertise as much. They're not as active on Twitter and such because they don't really have to be. They don't really have to advertise. This is typically, again, bulk orders. They deal with farms more. Um, we tend to kind of get the leftovers is what it seems more than anything, but they are currently available. 120 terahash, $26.99, which isn't a bad price. And the M50 is on that five nanometer platform. So this is their newer platform. So keep that in mind. So again, not as efficient as the XP, but considering that news, something to factor in, right? So I'll keep uh, my eyes peeled, see if we hear any more news on the XP, see what's going on there. But Overall, the prices have been going down. We'll see if this price sustains, right? See if this downtrend continues to go down. We'll see what happens. Because again, in reality, for these things to change price, it has to be a like sustained downtrend, right? If we go right back up to that $23,000 range, then it's nothing's going to happen, right? But the prices do go up. So one thing we have noticed is that as soon as that price goes up, it's almost immediate. It's within a week or two that those prices will skyrocket as well. But when there's downtrends, it needs to be a sustained downtrend for those prices to go down. Okay? So if it stays down in this range for a period of time, then expect these prices to come down even further. 
Okay? So, that's what I have my eyes on. Me, personally, I am hoping for the prices to go down more. Okay? I know it sucks looking at this number, but again, yield, bro. Look at that yield. Focus on your yield. That needs to be your primary concern. Okay? And again, we all want cheaper equipment. Okay? The only way to get cheaper equipment is for these prices to go down, these profitability numbers to go down, and maybe we'll get there. Right? Because even like what we were talking about, the IB links, the N3... Again, it's at 65 cents a day. Where's the K3 at? Oh, man, is it unprofitable? Ooh, down to 25 cents a day, right? So this one is almost at that prediction, right? We made that prediction that probably wasn't even going to be profitable if the price sustained, which, again, in like two weeks, after all these other K3s come online, this guy may not be profitable anymore. But that means this price... 3299 will hopefully go down. So, right? It's not the worst machine in the world. It's actually not too bad. I mean, comparing it to the KA3, obviously, KA3 is far superior. But if you're able to get this guy at a deal, something to look into, right, for the future. Okay? Again, we want to base everything off future prices. Okay? Again, look long term. All right? I know it ended up being kind of a long one, guys, but there was a lot to catch up on. A lot that I had to catch up on. I am still feel super behind. I didn't watch any YouTube videos or anything, so I feel super behind. So I still need to catch up on stuff. But um, there has been a lot of ASIC news. And there it is, right? So hopefully you found some value from the video, guys. Give you a nice little update on everything and where things are going. Please comment, like, and subscribe, guys. Thank you for watching. And I am out.